my experience has been, and I do a lot of transmissions, so my experience has been to try to come up with some way that I could do this task of, all, of getting these two components, the brake drum and the drive plate, centered up. We've went through a process on the lathe, cutting the companion flanges down so everything's square and flush. And so when we put it together, we stand a chance of having the least amount of run out we can get from this end to the fourth main end. So one thing that I came up with that helped me was I found a, a main shaft that was in pretty nice shape. Okay, so I sacrificed a decent main shaft. This one happened to be somebody beat it all up on the top end and so it was junk anyhow. But So if you had a main shaft that was 998 because that's kind of where we want to be or if it was 997 it wouldn't make any difference. We've cut off the top part where the bushing would be in the brake in the drive plate and the purpose of doing that is and and again this is the way I do it doesn't wiggle and, and jiggle. so you could do this on a vice and generally the vice has something on the back side that you can smack and beat on so that's a good place to mount the the uh, dial indicator a magnetic dial indicator so a couple of different ways to get there but there are oh and I would also suggest that you come in here and ream out with a bottom tap that's a 3 8 24 clean up all the threads and clean up the threads on your bolts because when I go together with this I'm going to just do finger tight and then I'm going to kind of tap around and push on this thing with my dial indicator to, to get it as center as I can and then I'm going to snug down three bolts and and try to keep it where, where I got it centered and at that point in time because we centered the bushings on the lathe and we uh, in the dry, in the brake drum and we centered the bushing in the drive plate in theory you should just be able to plop that down over here on a main shaft and just tighten things down and it goes well it really doesn't work that way because there's six po there's really six ways that you can put this on here so I go ahead and set it in place find find a place and I put in three bolts finger tight drop dropped it down and because there's a little bit of clearance you can see this thing can kind of flop around and move so we'll just run them down I just run them down finger tight just just snug and I'll bring my dial indicator up here and get up here where the fourth vein runs and oh, I try to square it and level it the best you can And if I run this around right now, I got uh, 10, 20, 30, I got 35 thousandths run out right there. So I'll come here with a little tapper, or I'm having to use a wrench here. I'm just going to kind of split that difference. Now I've got mm, about five. And so we'll tap on it again and there I got about two and now I got less than two and now I got less than one thousands so I've got three bolts in here but I don't want to just grab hold of one and just wrench it down because things do move and we'll repeat this process when we do our final assembly over on the transmission because this has got to come all apart and, and put all the clutch stuff and everything in it and the rest of the drums. But we'll, we'll do the same thing on the transmission. I just find it's easier to do this right here, right now. 
So it kind of moved just a little bit and I just barely snugged them down. And so I'm going to tap it around and it looks like I almost broke the gauge. So I'll go ahead and snug these down just a little more. And check and see if it moved any. And I still got less than a thousandth. So I'm going to go ahead and just put them down. And I have got Yeah, let's call it an honest foul. One thousandths run out right there. You got to remember that you do have some bearing play in here. I can move it hmm, eight or nine just because of bearing clearance. So it's running around here at less than a thou. Double check and make sure I got them three locked in. Okay. So we're ready to go over to our main shaft that we've mounted previously on our engine, uh, on our crankshaft flange. Don't have the flywheel in the, in the mix yet, but we know that we had very little to none run out on our main shaft. We got maybe a thou here, so we're going to move over to the, to the uh, engine and drop this on, take our dial indicator, and then we're going to try to come up with what is the total run out. And total run out is just don't set this on and spin it on the main shaft. It's rotate the crankshaft, read it, and index this 40, 40, 45, 90 degrees, whatever you want, but just keep rotating the crank and index this around and see what your worst spin reading is. So okay. can finish so the bearing, and a lot of folks do this, is there's a product called Time Saver. And it's uh, the Time Saver that you can use is the yellow. The yellow is uh, made to do soft metals, Babbitt in particular, a lot of us that, re that work on motors will use Time Saver to finish, uh, finish sizing and bearings and uh, people that are maybe pulling shims out of, a, out of a motor have found that it's very helpful rather than scraping because it'll go in and, and uh, remove the Babbitt and polish the bearing and make it fit and conform to the to the crankshaft but uh, it also works on bronze not as quick but you mix it up and I mix it up with a little transmission fluid and kind of get it to the consistency to where it'll just drip off uh, drip off the brush and then I just lather up and stick my brush up in here and kind of lather up these bushings and when you first go to slide that on it's really stiff because there's some grit in there this thing and get it to where it turns free Getting close. And get it to where it's running free. Okay. So we'll pull our dial indicator up here. Kind of get back where we were. Kind of try to get it squared up to where it's yeah, centered. And so I'll rotate the crankshaft around and I'm looking for what my run out is. I got a three. And if I index it, I got a two, maybe. Yeah, two, three. 
and I'll index it again. And I got a Bipkus. I got a two. And if I index it there, I've got about a two three. So I've got two three in it. But you can see I also got bearing play. Okay. So it's happy. This is this is happy. Notice how easy it spins. Okay. Spins easy. Lots of good clearance in it. It's not in a bind. That's happy. So when we get the flywheel on here, things might change because the flywheel might push stuff around. But the but the whole purpose of doing this is I can get to a couple of three, four thousandths run out in this setup. Uh, five six is okay. Run them all the time. There. We've got the crankshaft, the flanges, the main shaft flange. We've and we tried to cut and, and true that, and then we got the companion, the bushings on the on the drum, brake drums, a couple of those, and the flange of the brake drum, and the flange and the bushing on the drive plate. So there's a lot of things coming in here to play that if you just kind of reamed them out, you'd never get there. So if you put this thing together and you check it and you can't get it just happy 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 you can always take this loose and rotate it 180 degrees and a lot of times it'll it'll do one or two things it'll either get really happy or it'll get really worse uh, you got to remember you're dealing with uh, uh, Henry Ford made that scat made this or the crankshaft grinder ground ground the crankshaft or the holes are buggered or something so you so you got to kind of you can fuss with this but there's two locations that it could go in and it's just like the flywheel the flywheel's the same way when I put the flywheel on here if if I get this unsatisfactory result a lot of times just rotating the flywheel 180 degrees fixes it okay if you got a main shaft that either way you go on it it's within reason then you could even rotate the you, you could rotate the crank uh, uh, the, the the main shaft one way and the flywheel another way there's several different combinations that this thing would go together and your goal is to find the one that gets us where we want to be which would be little or no run out and and maybe four five six up here at the fourth main and ultimately uh, when I have reached satisfaction satisfactory I'll index everything so I happen to know on this one that my keyway is uh, in line with my uh, rod so I've indexed it and I'll take it apart introduce the flywheel try it I'll just throw it up on there and if it works it's fine if not I'll rotate it 180 degrees and see if I can make it happy we're happy we've used our dial indicator and we've got three or four thousandths maximum run out that's rotating the crankshaft around and indexing the indexing the brake drum uh, drive plate around and so we ran anywhere from kind of a one ish to a four ish so I'm I'm very satisfied with that so we're gonna have things apart here we got to get the flywheel on we got to finish building the the transmission so everything works this way remember there's six different ways that we could put this drive plate around and if you got if you can't get it centered up rotate it a hole you know index it and rotate it a hole and see what you get there rotate it a hole and I guarantee you somewhere along the line you're gonna come up with something that's pretty sweet and that's and that's due to you know we chucked it up in the lathe we did the best we could indexing the thing in it's rough out around material uh, so maybe you cut one, I'm going to over exaggerate it, maybe we cut the drive plate this way and we cut the, the uh, or the brake drum this, this angle and the drive plate was this. Well if you rotate that 180 degrees they kind of fit together, okay. Uh, it's an over exaggeration but in the real world it, that's probably what happens. So there's six holes. So we just happen to find the best location and I'm going to take this thing apart so the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to know how I got it apart so I can put it back together the same way. 
So we index our brake plate, drive plate, and then the other thing that I want to make sure is I got the main shaft. Main shaft can go on two different directions. So I know that my the, the keyway in this case happens to be in line with the rod throw. So the rod throws down, the, end, the key's pointing in that direction, and just because I'm old and I will forget, because sometimes it's the other direction works out better, I'm going to index my key way, and I put an index on my crank. So I just took the yellow paint stick and got in there. So now I'm ready to tear this apart. And a lot of times when you put the flywheel on, things change. Uh, burrs on the pins, uh, maybe the pins are wore out. Uh, Sometimes you just have to go through a lot of trial and error to figure it out. I've even had some that uh, I've knocked the pins out of the flywheel and put it together without them just to verify that I could get there. And then, I, then I, I'd come to the conclusion that the pins cause an interference, but it really, it really probably isn't the pin. It's probably tolerances. Uh, you know, this is misdrilled a little bit where the pins go in or the pins go in or, or put in a little caca or the holes wallered out or bird or something. So uh, there's some trial and error that you can go through that you'll end up going through. This flywheel goes on particularly tight. <coughs> so I'll get it started. And I'm going to install our flywheel bolts. And then sometimes you're lucky and it just all goes together. As simple as can be, but I've had transmissions that I've fought to get in alignment for a day, day and a half. I mean, it sometime and I've also had some where I've just got a different flywheel if the flywheels pushing things over just fine just put another flywheel on it and it's just as happy as all get out uh... and I like to do this before I build up the magneto because it's about a 32, 33 pound flywheel as opposed to the sharp ring gear and the sharp magnets lifting that on and off. Sometimes. And I'm not really 100% torqued, but I'm going to come out here and get down here at the bottom as low as I can. And remember I said we had maybe a thou. And I'm going to rotate this around. And I got about a thou plus. So it moved a little bit, but I don't have it torqued down. And tighten it on down. We'll go ahead and probably get rid of what a little bit's there and up there at the top showing about a little more than two so I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down uh, if it was really f if I if I if I torqued it down and I then I had an unacceptable amount of run out I, could, I would rotate this flywheel around 180 degrees and see if that made a, uh, an improvement also there is this one's exceptionally tight, but some of them, there's a little bit of play clearance in between the flanges of the crankshaft and the flywheel. So a lot of times you can take a dead blow and figure out where, which way it needs to move and give her a little smack and bump it over. And you'd be surprised. You can bump it over a thou, thou and a half. So it just depends on the parts that you're working with. So 
so it did the flywheel did move that main shaft uh, or at least pushed it over to where it isn't centered like what we had when we just had our bare pins our pins and, and four bolts in it but the ultimate goal is what do I have here now <coughs> like I said if I've got if I've got something in the neighborhood of it's just almost too short isn't it Bill story of my life ultimately I want to see what I got up here so there's a rotate through and it's uh, about a four and there's a five and there's a three and there's a nothing the gauge is broke so my theory is if you have four to six run out you'll make a happy sweet transmission so even